All right, this is uh, Grade 3, Module 1, Lesson 18, where we are going to continue using the distributive property to um, understand our multiplication facts. And what we're going to do is, is, oftentimes, if a student has a hard time with a big problem, like 8 times 4, we want to teach them those survival skills so that they can take the 8 times 4, which they might not know, and say, well, I know that 6 times 4 and 2 times 4 is going to equal the same value. And this is 24, this is 8, so, oh, okay, so the answer is 32. So 8 times 4 is 32, and that's how they're going to develop that fluency with their multiplication and eventually, you know, memorize them, because that's exactly what we want. So this is just a diagram straight out of the teacher edition where um, we can see that, and I'm going to see if I can do this in real time here. I'm going to unlock this, and I'm going to move it around, and I'm going to take this, and nope, it won't let me move it around. Okay, so basically what we're saying is here's a 7 times 3, but it's been broken up into uh, two smaller arrays. So we've got here a 5 times 3, and here is a 2 times 3, but over here it's written in labels. So 7 threes is equal to 5 threes plus 2 threes. All right, and ideally students will know that 5 threes is 15, 2 threes is 6, and add those together, you get 21. And this number bond up here using units, as in the labels, threes, and can be rewritten as 7 times 3 is equal to 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3, and that's where we would get the 21. So let's put this to practice with an actual problem. So we have 9 times 4, and the students are being asked to use a number bond. And because they're not given anything in, in particular, there's going to be a lot of different answers that might work. And I'll try and choose one that students are unlikely to choose. I'm going to say, oh, 7 times 4 and 2 times 4. And so over here, that means 7 times 4 and 2 times 4. And I know that 7 times 4 is 28, and 2 times 4 is 8. So that's going to look like 28 and 8. And if I add those together, I get 36. And sure enough, 9 times 4 is 36. Now, boy, 7 and 2 are not the only ones, of course. It is very likely students may have chosen 5 times 4 and 4 times 4. Or they might have chosen 6 times 4 and 3 times 4. In fact, this is a very interesting game to know how many different possibilities could students have come up with. Are these the only two? Or can we come up with others? And that's kind of an interesting mathematical um, activity. And then in this problem, this is our last problem for this video, Stephen solves 7 times 3 using the distributive property. Show an example of what his work might have looked like. So I'm going to use the distributive property, and I'm going to say, and I'm going to think of it like a number bond just for the heck of it. So 7 times 3, and I know that that could be written as, oh, well, let's say 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3. And if I wanted to do it in the more official distributive property method, it would look like 7 times 3 is equal to 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3. And then solving it, this is 15 plus 6, and this is 21. And there's our answer. Over here in our number bond, we could have done this times it equals 15 and equals 6, and put them together to equal 21. And that is lesson 18, using the distributive property.